You remember this guy from the Mary Tyler Moore Show? This is the one. You also remember him. I remember you from Working Stiffs yeah. on CBS with Jim Belushi. I remember you from Report to Murphy. Meet the overnight sensation, <laughs> Michael Douglas. Yeah. How you doing, Michael Douglas? Great. Great. You're not even going to respond to to Michael Douglas. No, that's my real name. I know, and that's the odd thing because I I've talked to you before. How soon they forget. Yeah. How soon they forget. When. And this this was in this was for Report to Murphy. I think it was in Washington D.C. about uh, two years ago yeah. or something. You do all these things. Well, here's the what cinema and tape. Yeah, but here's what was really odd. Uh, I had talked to probably 20 people that day, and yeah. if you think we began to blur, you began to blur. Uh, I'll bet, yeah. And you were one of the last interviews of a two-day marathon talk killer. Yeah. And I said, and our guest today is Michael Keaton, and you said, that's not my name. And, and I was just stunned because I, See? I thought, I knew you I, like, something I like got that. him mixed up. I, mean, I got him confused with somebody else, <laughs> and then you explained, no. My real name is, is my Michael Douglas, but somebody had that name, so I took the name of Keaton. Yeah, it's an old story, and I think we've proven it's still just as boring as it was before. No, I thought it was wonderful, yeah. even in the retelling. <laughs> even in the retelling. It holds up. Well, listen, this guy has got a new movie out. Uh, his first major motion picture was um, Night Shift yeah. with Henry Winkler. Uh, that's what made him an overnight sensation, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. M Michael. Uh, you had a, an audition. You had to do, go in front of like, beat out a couple of hundred people to audition for Night Shift? Yeah, I don't know how many, pretty many. And it was, you know, just go, read, uh, come back, read again, come back, we'll put it on tape, you know, about four times. What did you do? What, what did you do that was unusual or interesting to get their attention? Well, actually, Ron Howard did, did a great thing because there were a couple ways to do this I think this role and he's uh, he said what he told me guys are coming in here and doing kind of charming and then a few are um, just committing to it he said I'd suggest you just commit to it and that was my hunch but I was also a little skeptical about it. so when he said that I was on chairs I was uh, on curtains I was under curtains I was under chairs and I, I just took it. I took control of the whole room, or I tried to take control of the whole room, mm -hmm. because you know this character that where you have to do it, mm -hmm. you're not going anywhere. And if you overdo it, you're not going anywhere. But better to go too far, because then he can always make you come back. Variety calls you wonderfully deranged. <laughs> Does that make like, you feel good or, yeah. or kind of it wacko? Makes me feel wonderfully deranged. Wonderfully deranged. Yeah. You know what he's doing now? He's so deranged that he got fired from his job and he's home taking care of the children. And you know what then they had to do? Da, 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 da. Oh, you got one of these? Yes, we have. Oh, these are we great. have. Do you want to wear your. Sure. You want to, but we still have to be able to hear you, Michael. Okay. He has become a house husband. I like in this. In the home. And we, we got to still be able to hear you. And he had to put on the apron. He's not tied to his mother's apron strings. They had to take care of the children. Okay, now, Michael, you don't have any children in real life, right? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. How many do you have? Seven. No. No, have, you uh, come from a family of seven. Oh, yeah, I knew something like that. <laughs> I have uh, one who's uh, seven weeks old. Uh, seven and a half. About seven and two days now. Where's my watch? I, I know almost to the hour how old he is. Um, right now, probably giving his mother a hard time. When I left, that's what he was doing anyway. Okay, but seven weeks and two hours and three minutes, you know, yeah. it doesn't give you the real flavor. I mean, the real flavor. You've got a lot of interesting things in store for you. Yeah. C really, Michael, could you stay home? Could you stay home and take care of the kid kids if you probably. have some more? Oh, yeah, I could stay. I wouldn't mind staying home taking care of the kids. Taking care of a house, I don't think I care about doing. And I and I, I don't know if I could really take care of kids when it came down to it. Oh, you know, if you have to, you do anything. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't be bad to take care of the kids. I don't think taking care of the house would be awful. Where do you live? In California. So right now, is your wife at home doing the traditional role? Uh, she is in another part of the country where she has a house, uh, and they're up there where I just came from. I say her because it's her house. She paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a, a comic look at what happens when the, when the wife becomes an executive and goes off to work and leaves him home with the three babies. There are a lot of funny bits that happen. Yeah, it's a funny movie. For you, what was the funniest as, as an actor? 
I, you know, I don't know, but I was, I was watching some clips the other day, and I was, uh, they really genuinely made me laugh. I thought some of them were, were uh, pretty funny. What did I really enjoy? I don't know. You know, the process gets to be so kind of not, yeah, tiring. And also, you do it a couple of times, and you get a reset, and it becomes a real technical process that sometimes, it's, you know, you're not really, it's not that funny. You're just saying the words and acting the scene and then going home. Um, Occasionally, you know, something will break open. There, were, there was a lot of fun with uh, Terry and Martin. You know, we had a lot of laughs. Um, he's talking about Martin Mull. There, he's, he's a strange kind of comic. <laughs> he's a strange kind of guy. Uh, you know, the little twinkle in the eye. You, you, he doesn't even have to say anything and you laugh. Yeah. yeah he just got, looks funny. Gets an attitude, yeah. That was a very funny scene w in the race, in the particular race where you lose to Martin Mull. Uh -huh. Martin Mull is kind of the heavy in here, and he's, this is the good guy. Yeah. But uh, he becomes a real good guy because he loses to Martin Mull just in order to help out his wife. But you know, to me, what was the funniest? It was just a little tiny bit. Oh, yeah, let me hear. When you held up the baby's bottom in the restroom yeah. over the blow dryer to dry off the baby's bottom. Now, yeah. that, to me, is a genius. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Do, who did that? <laughs> Somebody must have been the no, genius behind that. No, that was in the uh, script. I think Norman Steinberg wrote that little thing. That, li that little bit was very funny. And also, just the look on your face uh, when, when you dress up like a, a lumberjack yeah. with your big chainsaw and, you know, the hat that's going back behind you to show how macho you really are. That, to me, funny bit. Yeah, that's funny. That's a nice piece. And you haven't seen the film yet. How... I mean, I would think you would be, you as the actor, uh -huh. would be the, the one most interested in seeing it immediately. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see the last one until it came. I, the last movie I didn't want to see, I wanted to see it in a theater with my popcorn. I wanted to have the whole experience of a feature film. You know, I didn't want to know about screenings or anything, so I went down by myself. This one, the same thing. I like going and seeing it, watching it. Plus, you know, if, if you go to a screening, you, chances are you're going to get caught and somebody's going to ask you about a lot of oh, things yeah. or tell you about yeah. things. And, and, at that point, I don't know how I'm going to be feeling because, you know, I want to go see it myself and then go back and see it. Then I'll talk about it. So you're going to see it with the normal audience. Yeah. And they're not going to know that you're there and you get to see how they react? Yeah. Is that a good idea? I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. It's fun. Will you report to Murphy when <laughs> 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 report to Lita when you right. decide whether you like this film or not? Yeah. I will. Okay. His name is Michael Keaton, and Terry Garr is also in the film, and Martin Mull, and a, a wonderful cast of people, little tiny people. Well, no, they're big people, but they're they little, have little tiny cameo parts of a lot of television people. Oh, Mar yeah? Uh, Miriam Flynn, Flynn yeah. from the Tim Conway show. She plays... Oh, yeah, uh, right, right. Yeah, and she's delightful. She's comedian. very good, yeah. And Graham Jarvis. Yeah. Um, Edie McClurg. Yeah, little, you know, little tiny cameo roles. So you'll see a lot of people that you Chris recognize Lloyd. in the film. Who? Chris Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. It's called Mr. Mom, and that's who he is for the moment until he becomes Johnny Dangerously, which is his next little venture down. Hey, good luck. Thanks. You're on the rise, kid. Thanks. We'll catch a rising star, okay? All right. Michael Keaton. Don't go away. 10-11 morning continues.